In November of 2022, I bought myself the Olympus EM10 Mark II and uh, it immediately changed my mind about Micro Four Thirds. So much so that just a couple of months later, I bought myself the EM1 Mark II and um, yeah, it's, it's kind of become my main camera. Now, when I made that first video about the EM10 Mark II, I said this. Now, this isn't me fanboying over Micro Four Thirds and like, oh, I'm switching to Micro Four Thirds, it's the best thing ever. That's not true. Didn't age well, did it? Now, since getting the EM1 Mark II, it's been used for pretty much 95%, I would say, of everything I do both on this channel and for my own personal work, for print and for stock and all of those other things. Uh, it just, it's just so bloody good. So today's gonna be quite a busy one. I've come out here to the woods to get some sample photographs for like two videos I'm already on with. Um, as well as just enjoying the day. But also tonight, I'm meeting up with Lee and I'm meeting up with Chris and we're gonna go out to the coast and we're gonna shoot some Astro stuff and that will also hopefully result in a video. So while I was out here, I figured I would talk to you a little bit about the EM1 after like two months of use, pretty much consistent use, and uh, what I think of it and why you should almost certainly definitely buy one. Now. You see with the rollout of the version three firmware update, the EM1 Mark II, became almost like a brand new camera. Since its launch, Olympus had rebuilt their AF algorithm from the ground up for the EM1X, and in that version three update, they brought it to the EM1 Mark II. Now, while the EM1X still has that edge because of its speed with those dual processors and the big battery, etc., the EM1 Mark II was given a new lease of life, making it very viable for sports and wildlife, not to mention the implementation of the phase detect autofocus for video and OM Log 400. So after two months using this camera, do I regret selling my Sony gear? <laughs> no, not even a little bit. Here's the thing, I'm about as far from brand loyal as you can get. If something works, and works well, and it's enjoyable to use, I will use it. For a decade I used Nikon gear because for photography it works and it works really well. When I wanted to do YouTube I switched to Sony because I thought that would work as well. It didn't. The Olympus does. And as a bonus, I don't have to sell a kidney to get into Pro Glass with the Olympus system, unlike you do with Sony. Now this thing has surprised me in more ways than I thought it would. Now is it the perfect camera? No, not, no, it's not. But it's pretty damn close for what I need. Now, there is no perfect camera as far as I'm concerned because companies intentionally cripple their cameras in order to sell their other cameras. Canon is one of the worst culprits for it. They'll bring out a new body, a new camera, but they'll leave out very important things like dual pixel autofocus for video or IBIS or some other nonsense. It's all just to sell their other stuff. I want something that gets as close to what I need in a single package as possible and the EM1 Mark II does that. So the EM1 Mark II gives you 20 megapixels and that 80 megapixel high res shot which is way more resolution than anybody realistically needs. Olympus cameras probably have the best IBIS in the game. The autofocus is yet to let me down, it's got a good size and weight to it and just a, a side note about the size and the weight of the EM1 Mark II if you're looking at Micro Four Thirds as a way to downsize or as a small light system don't buy this camera. This is about the same size as the EOS RP from Canon and probably a little bit heavier so bear that in mind you're probably better off looking at maybe the EM5 or the EM10 series. Now the thing that surprised me the most with this camera 
was the video. Of course I've looked at samples and so on and so on, but I'm, I'm no McKinnon. I don't need a red Komodo or, or a Canon C500 or any of that business. What the Olympus was offering was good enough to me. But when I looked at the microfold head system as a whole, it was clear that Olympus wasn't the video centric one. You know, even cameras like the GH5, the GH6 or the G9 would have given me more video options. But as I'm a photographer first, the Olympus just made more sense to me. But when I saw the video from the cinema 4K or just the regular 4K and the OM log and the flat profiles gives you loads of wiggle room in post. It was enough for me, more than enough for me. I mean, you're watching, this is the cinema 4K what you're watching right now. I mean, granted, YouTube compression and all that, but still. I found with the EM1 Mark II, much like its little brother, the EM10 Mark II, they're just a joy to use. I want to use these cameras and that is a big part of it. I. The, the Sony's are very capable cameras, and if you buy into the high-end stuff, they're phenomenal things, but they're absolutely shit to hold, and, and they're just not fun. Add that to the fact that this thing has two card slots plus weather sealing, it gives you that confidence to just keep going even when the weather tends to crap. On top of that, you've got that awesome Micro Four Thirds lens lineup. Now, one of the most important things to consider when buying a camera is, of course, the price. And in that, this will not let you down. These can be had all day, every day for about £500 on the used market. I actually got mine for less than £400 over on mpb.com. Not sponsored, it's just somewhere I've used for a long time for buying used gear. Uh, and that was in its box and all that stuff. And it's in absolutely fantastic condition. So yeah, this isn't going to break the bank. And it's a lot of camera for the money that you're paying. Now, despite this camera being launched in 2016, at the end of 2016, making it a little bit over six years old, because of that firmware update that brought many of the features from the EM1X from 2019 into this camera, you've got a very modern camera in terms of features for not a real lot of money. And before dropping cash on any camera, you should just ask yourself one simple question. What do you actually need in a camera? You see, if you're only shooting stills, um, posting to the socials, printing small, Pretty much any camera from the last 15 years will be good enough. Just put good glass on it. And despite all the marketing and hype and whatnot, uh, when it comes down to it, if you're not yet good at taking pictures, it doesn't matter what camera you use. A five grand camera is not gonna fix that. Something like the EM1 Mark II is not only great for beginners, it will allow you to grow. And it's great for folks like me who have finally realized that bigger sensors just generally mean bigger everything. You know, bigger lenses, more to carry, higher prices. And it doesn't actually add anything meaningful to my photography. Now, this camera offers a level of functionality that I'm probably never going to fully utilize. The high res shooting mode, live composite, in camera focus stacking, the list goes on. It's absolutely chock full of cool features that you have to pay a premium for with every other camera system, even on the used market. To say I recommend this camera is an understatement.